Welcome back everyone, hope you're all fit and staying positive. I know it's hard, but hopefully my online art classes will provide uh, a nice distraction uh, and some light relief for all you uh, creatives and indeed all my art students, um, especially during these uh, unprecedented times. Um, also hope you had a, a wonderful uh, Easter again under the circumstances. Um, now, today we are going to look at a simple still life composition uh, using watercolouring pencils uh, or watercolour markers. Okay, so I've got three uh, still life studies here uh, using uh, different media. Uh, this one was what uh, I produced for an adult art class uh, using acrylics. Um, this one I did yesterday as a practice run for today's uh, class and this was one that I did um, in the children's classes where, we dem where I demonstrated different hatching techniques using colouring, watercolouring pencils and watercolour markers. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to go into the uh, kitchen um, to demonstrate a little bit of art science, um, especially as the sunlight uh, it's early in the, in the day and the sunlight is very low. It's coming right through the kitchen window, uh, which uh, casts some beautiful shadows. Uh, so we're going to just quickly zip in there. Uh, I'll show a simple little still life, and how you can set one up, and then we'll get back in the hot seat. So this is a, a little simple composition that I've put together. Now the reason that I have um, set it up here in the kitchen is because the morning light is low. Uh, which means that it's hitting the side of the fruit and casting this lovely shadow to the right hand side. Now if we draw a still life too late in the day, uh, i.e. 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, then the sun is more over the top and shining and shines down on the fruit, therefore minimalizing the shadows and all the different planes which we're going to talk about in a second. So we're going to talk a little bit about the art science if we just cover a few key points, it will make uh, your drawing or your still life drawing uh, more uh, realistic. So the first thing is uh, the light planes. So this here where you can see me pointing to is the lightest side of the fruit and that's because it's facing the sun and they're called the light planes. Uh, and the opposite to the light planes is the dark planes. Okay, as you can see because the sun, they're not in the direct light of the sun, they're not as light as the ones that are. Um, and then in between we have what's called the uh, half tones which is the band that is in between the light planes and the dark planes. Something else to consider is the cast shadow. So we've already mentioned it. These are the cast shadows on the right hand side. Very important that you get that in your drawing. Uh, and also the highlights. You can see the lightest part of the apple here uh, and the lightest part of the pear is right at the top there and that's what's known as the highlight and the opposite to a highlight is the core of the shadow and that's the darkest area of the shadow part here in the dark planes so you can just see there probably that's probably the darkest point or even to the outer side uh, one last thing to think about is reflected light now reflected light is light hitting the surface and then bouncing up underneath the fruit causes reflected light and I'll demonstrate this when we get back to the studio and finally we've got to start to think about the composition now you see that I've got the pear leaning on the apple there which is kind of a traditional uh, composition but you can be quite modern if you want and you can start to add a few props uh, I've got here a kitchen towel so we can make them all nice and cozy maybe we could stand the pear up uh, place the apple directly in front which then gives it a more contemporary uh, composition or you can stick to the good old traditional one and have them kind of lean in on each other with a nice kitchen towel and the lights just got stronger look how beautiful that is I think we need to take a picture of that with the iPhone before we leave uh, and then we'll get ourselves in the hot seat over there uh, into the studio Okay, so we're back here in the studio, uh, and, and this is a picture I took uh, of a still life that I set up yesterday morning uh, in the kitchen, uh, and it'll demonstrate again what we've just discussed uh, with the different planes. So you can see that we've got the light plane on both sides here, 
of the orange and the apple. Uh, you've got the uh, dark planes uh, you can see here. And the half tones are better illustrated, especially on the orange. You can see a more vibrant orange here than you can on the pale side or on the light planes. So that's the half tones. Uh, and then you've got this reflected light that we talked about. Can you see how it's uh, the light has hit the uh, chopping board, bounced back up, and, and the red has got a very pale pink, and the orange has got a very pale orange uh, underneath the dark planes. Uh, the highlight, we talked about that, very uh, well illustrated here on the apple, uh, and you can see it's got quite an uh, unusual shape. It reminds me of the, uh, of, uh, the Milky Way spinning around there. Um, so a, a bigger highlight there on the orange. And don't forget the core of the shadow, which is the darkest area of the dark planes, and you can see it around here and here, and the cast shadow, which we've got uh, there. Something extra that we've got here as well, we've got the reflected orange going into the apple, so a bit of orange going into the apple, and a bit of red going into the orange. Uh, you can see that I've used the uh, kitchen towel uh, as, a, as a backdrop. So this is what I, uh, I produced yesterday uh, in preparation for today's class using uh, very basic watercolour in pencils. Uh, I didn't actually add any water to this image, so they could have just been ordinary colouring pencils. And there's nothing special about these colouring pencils either, but we'll talk about materials in a few seconds. So I'm quite pleased with that. You can see the light planes, the middle, the half tones, the dark planes, the reflected light, the highlights, the core of the shadows, the cast shadows. And if you go through that basic checklist, then your still life will look a lot more real, realistic. So this is one that I did in class, in the children's art classes that we, we talked about before. Uh, and again, it's using the water-soluble um, pencil, colouring pencils, and the water-soluble marker pen. It's kind of a controlled scribble, similar to what we did on the Kingfisher. Uh, now again, this was done in a very short space of time, because obviously the children want to start uh, producing their own piece of work. So, art materials for today. Um, Obviously, uh, colouring pencils, water colouring pencils, so you can see I've got quite a huge uh, range of colours here. A brand called US Sense, uh, which are very good, um, again, very affordable. Uh, and something else that I use quite a lot is the pencils. Um, you can't really go wrong with Winsor & Newton or Daily Rowney as well, so there is a great choice out there. Um, also, uh, I would recommend the Paint On Multi Techniques from Claire. Fontaine. Uh, I got this from Art and Office and Art and Office will sell all of this as well so if he is still doing his deliveries then uh, get, get in touch with him through his website okay what's good about this is it's a nice clean paper uh, it can take a lot of water abuse uh, and it's just it's great for all kinds of media right so that's the art materials and finally a uh, good old pencil uh, I think we used this last time it's a H, H stand, standing for hard Mars Lumograph, great pencils, um, and uh, the reason I've chosen a H pencil is so we can get a very light line. So just before we start to draw, uh, like we did uh, with the Kingfisher and the Owl, we're going to talk a little bit about the shapes and the negative space. So here I've hatched what looks like uh, an egg timer. You've got the top part of an egg timer, the bottom part of an egg timer, uh, or you could say it's a, a witch's hat. But these two almost equilateral triangles, I know they curve a little bit, but the sides all look the same length, um, is the first thing that I drew. And then we're going to break up uh, the two pieces of fruit in the shape. So I've divided, I mean, they look like, uh, it looks like the earth, doesn't it? So you've got all these different continents. And I've not gone into too much detail. I'm just trying to get the basic shapes in there. And you can see where all the greens part of the apple, again, I've just highlighted it to help me navigate, to help me get around the apple and to help me understand and visualise where all the different colours are. And I've just gently hatched here as well the middle tones, again, so I can navigate when I'm using my colouring pencils. I've also highlighted the light tones and the cast shadows, of course. Yes. Alright, so again, if we just carry the lines across, so carrying this line across the top and a nice kind of very sketchy line, this fine, very sketchy box. Okay, and once we've got the box in position, uh, we can then start to take some of the heights um, and start to draw the negative shape. So, if we look at the height of the orange, very easy, just 
top of the orange, we know it's around about there. Top of the apple, it's around about there. Bottom of the orange, slightly higher this time than what the apple is, which is slightly lower. Now, if I use my pencil as a measuring tool, I can see that the joining point of, or if it's an egg timer, the middle part of the egg timer is exactly halfway point. Okay, so halfway point of mine, so if I keep my fingers on there, it's exactly there. Okay, so a few verticals, and you'll see it goes nice and straight at the beginning, and then it starts to angle slightly. So we're going to go draw with straight lines. So there is my egg timer. And already, just by focusing on the negative space, I've already drawn parts of the orange and part of the apple. Okay, now I'm going to finish it off using those straight lines. And I think we're ready for some colour action. Once I've got the drawing um, pretty accurate, I, I like to sometimes, like we did with the Kingfisher, just gently rub, rub it out using the side of the rubber. Just make sure your rubber's not got pencil draw pencil marks on it, so it's clean. Just clean it up on the side like so on your tape. It's like sanding it down, and then just give it a gentle rub all over. Not too much, but just getting rid of those harsher lines. You're not going to be able to see it soon. <laughs> Very gently. Just to take those harsh lines off. Okay, we're going to stamp the lightest colours first. So you can see there's lots of kind of a very little lemon yellow uh, going on underneath the red. And you can see it coming through in various places as well. So again, I'm going to hatch in a kind of more scribbly technique rather than a nice, perfectly neat one, leaving gaps when the paper comes through at this moment in time. Now, you say that's where the yellow area is, but I can see it coming through as well, so I'm just going to carry that over into the apple where I can see a bit of yellow coming through. Now, what's nice about pencil colouring pencils is that when you put a red over the top of the yellow, starts to look orange, which is great. to get a sketchy feel which is why I'm doing the scribbly lines and not the nice smooth lines okay like like this we're not going for the nice perfectly smooth we're going for the the scribbly sketchy the energy line the line with it okay so we've got two yellows down now we're going to more of a very pale orange almost tangerine orange I can see some oranges coming through on that apple especially around the um, the well of the apple. I can feel the way. Come on.
time with energy. That's key. And don't go over the highlight. You need that to, the paper to stay white. A, um, a grey. This one is... I don't know who's this one. I think this is... Um, Daily Rowney. They're beautiful. Daily Rowney. You can't go wrong with Daily Rowney. Lots of greys coming through the top of there as well. And in that core. As well as greens. Okay, which takes me to the greens. I'm going to go for a very dull green. Earthy green. You are. So now I'm going to look for the browns. So I've got starting to go towards some darker colours now. Before I get to the reds. And I'm just going to, again, a bit tighter my scribbles now. As I get into the well of the apple there where it's dark. There's shadowing going on in there. And then also while we're on this brown, we can just very gently start to map out where the dark planes are. Again, scribbling on. The cross hatching going on there too. So a cross hatching one way, then the other way. Okay, now we can start some reds. We can start to squiggle in, scribble in, I should say. Squiggle, squib, scribble, squiggle, tongue, tongue twister. So I'm in the half tones here, between the dark planes and the light planes. Now I'm going to go to one of the darker reds. And I noticed very orange at the bottom there where it hits the dark planes. I'm going to carry that orange into the dark planes. I can see some orange coming through those browns. Uh, I'm still working in those browns, starting to scribble in. Remember, we want to try and keep a sketchy feel to this one. So we're going to scribble in that cast shadow. I can detect some reds coming through in that cast shadow there from the reflection of the apple. that red coming through into the dark planes. Now I'm starting to detect a little bit of blue in those dark planes. Back to my reds. Switch into my orange. Okay. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Now if I carry on with this scribbling over the top eventually starting to hit that point where it's looking real like this apple. Now if you want to have that kind of effect then carry on working those colours in over the top of each other, fusing them like we did with the oil pastels and bringing out all those reds into the cast shadow and then in the light area as well. And keep working it and working it eventually it will end up like this. But I think what we'll do is we'll stop pretty much here now and we'll start having a look at adding some water which is something I didn't do on this one to see if we can smooth some of that texture off and let's just see let's see what happens we're here live let's go for it so I've got a nice little small filbert brush here uh, you can see that the shape is curved at the top loaded with water and I'm just going to gently position that on to the middle tones of the planes. Okay, there, not too much water. I'm 
And notice so I'm not smoothing it over, I'm following the texture almost over the top of the scribbles, just gently smoothing those out. Actually it seems to be working quite nicely. Let's go over that yellow into the yellow. And we can have a little bit of fusing and dripping going on in there. Just softening those colours up. Let's try it on the light planes. Into the dark planes. Let's just go and wander over here into the into the light planes. I think Tom, is it working? It's looking good. Nice fusion in the colours. Put it down here. And that's not bad. Let's soften up the cast shadow a little bit. So while the water uh, is drying, I just thought I'd show you. So if you do go down this route of just the pencils, then you will get a more realistic finish. Um, and this is more of a sketch finish because we've used the watercolours. But I do like what's happening with the water and the way it's fused. And I do like that kind of sketchy feel. And once it's dry, we could just reinforce some of the edging and reinforce some of the reds to try and get the same, the same shine. Uh, but we'll start with the orange now. Uh, hopefully my cameraman's got the orange in place. Yep. Yep. Uh, and just like we did with the apple, we'll start with the lightest colours first. The colours that you see from underneath. As you can see, I started even before the camera cameraman was ready. <laughs> I'm in there with the yellow. Let's see how quickly I can squiggle those colours in. Digging the dirt, helping a friend, seeing a worm, a bag of stones. Can all the answers lie beneath the ground? Digging is done, it's time for some tea Two macaroons for me, me, me And finally, let's me have a number Wherever you are, this is where you're meant to be Whatever you see, this is what you're meant to see She pushed me along, she sees who I am a chance to be who I can She has no fear She'll try everything Just wants to be loved Like every man and woman The easy way out The best way in The comfort zone The place to live I'm trying too hard To be someone I'm not cut out to be Spoiled by success The hammer and axe A fly on the wall To be. Whatever you see, this is what you're meant to see. She pushed me along, she sees who I am. She gave me a chance to be who I can. She has no fear, she'll try everything. She wants to be loved like every man and woman. Digging the dirt, helping a friend. Seeing a worm, a bag of stones Can all the answers lie beneath the ground Right, so if we go back to our filbert brush Well, I like the flat filbert brush because I can kind of get the texture in better I'm going to start on those half tones Now we've had a good practice run with the apple, so we should get it better this time round.
good. So we've added the water to the orange now as well uh, and you'll notice that the apple is completely flat and dry so we can rework a little bit of the shiny areas of the apple while the orange dries. I think before I'll do that I'll just work up that background very light I don't want to um, I like the fact that the emphasis is on the fruit so I want it to be very knocked back so very sketchy light uh, tea towel and then we'll put some more red in the apple and then some more orange in the orange. And just very lightly scribbling in the texture of the tea towel. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Looks like cotton. We're just going to finish off, as I say, now the apple's completely dry and the orange is almost dry. We're just going to reinforce some of those colours and I think we're good to go. I'm also just taking the hard edge of the pencil from that cast shadow, just lifting it off. Same with the tea towel, just taking away that edge. So it's more in the distance. It's more about the fruit. You can just see a suggestion of a tea towel going on there and that's a much better um, cast shadow edge. So just to reinforce those colours on the apple. Like so. And then likewise for the orange. I'm going to get the darkest orange I've got, which is this one. And I'm just going to smooth off and add a little bit more texture to it as I do. As I go along. And I reckon we're almost there. Switching that orange on the other side. See a bit of orange sweeping back in there. And I reckon we're almost there. I think Tommy? Yes, yeah, looking really good. We've added a bit of water. And we fixed it up a bit at the end, and I'm quite happy with that. So let's see what you can do. Yes, so uh, thanks for tuning in today, guys. Uh, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed today's lesson uh, using water soluble pencils. Um, the one I've just done is here, so that was the one that we used the water with, uh, and this is the one that we didn't. So this is a lot tighter and a lot more realistic than what this one is, but this has got a nice sketchy feel to it. And I think Tommy prefers that one, is that, is yeah, that right, I Tommy? Do, yeah, I think Tommy prefers the one we've just done. Um, but yeah, uh, get being creative. Uh, make your own still life as well. Get the fruit that your mum and dad have got. Um, position them. You could have a contemporary composition or you could have a traditional one. Think about uh, maybe using the kitchen towel uh, as, a, as a backdrop. Uh, and set your own um, still life composition up uh, in the morning so you've got the morning light which is low and it will cast those lovely shadows um, so I hope you've enjoyed today um, make sure you hit the like button uh, subscribe and hopefully I will see you again guys next week thanks